Intro music. Hi, I'm Joey. I'm James, and this is the Brothers Padre. James, everyone's dead. Everyone's dying. The sands of time are wearing on our players. Our precious Padres are wearing thin, James. In this episode, we talk about the great injury of what well, spring training, spring training week three, the great plague. Five people were injured, James. Five people were injured. Very sad. Very concerning. <laughs> it's spring training, James. Of course, not that concerning. But welcome to the Brothers Padre. Uh, spring training week three is in the book, James. It is. Um... Nothing really exciting has <laughs> happened. I mean, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? There are people that spend their whole lives going to travel ball, going to middle school baseball games. I don't know, middle school, baseball, high school baseball games, and they're they're in spring training. They're having a time of life, and you just said nothing important happened to them. Wow, wow. You think Robert Hassel's parents are like, yeah, nothing important happened. I'm sure Robert Hassel the third's parents are. <laughs> Very happy that he made it to spring training for two weeks. Um, and they're probably disappointed that... I mean, if they would have taken to a few more pickup games, maybe he'd make it to the final roster. Oh. Ah, well. He'll come back. Just kidding, Mr. The Third. <laughs> we love you. Come on a podcast. Yeah, James. I think the big news... Kind of like big news that happened this week was uh, the injury bug, like as I mentioned... And yeah, it, it it's kind of gnarly. Um, the first one from like minor to major is you know Hosmer got the tum tum aches, which okay, wasn't he out for like a week because he had some sort of stomach issue in twenty twenty? Yeah, supposedly this is different. He said he said this time he thinks something he ate, which I also thought it was the same thing last time. Maybe it's a different thing he ate. Maybe he should have a stricter diet and or cut out gluten. I think that he needs to go on like either pure carnivore or something that will help him because we can't have him have tum tum eggs. Yeah, this is true. We 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 need we need Haas dog. We need How old is Hosmer? I think he's thirty one. He's old enough to know what he's allergic to. I just I. Eric Hosmer age inside pot inside brothers Padre uh, a little bit. I am allergic to pork. I'm one of the few people that I think in the world is allergic to this meat. But you know what I do? I don't eat pork. <laughs> Listen, man, when you... I don't have a million dollars a game right on it either. I don't quit eating whatever the spicy chicken combo, whatever it is, Hosmer. Poor guy. So, yeah, but he says he's day by day and probably be, I don't know... He, He'll drink some Pedialyte to be fine. I was going to say, can we do the same thing we did with Kevin Eddie? Everyone mailed him like Snickers bars that one time to get healthy. Can we send him <laughs> some Tums? Can we start a campaign to send Hosmer Tums? <laughs> so not too concerned about that one. Um, and then Pierce Johnson was throwing bullets, uh, 90 plus mile an hour fastballs, great curveball, and all of a sudden trainers came out the mound left like oh wow he's throwing 97 he just leaves has a groin injury no bueno no no bueno at all his cup was a little too tight yeah no no good but i think he'll i mean also same thing is making tingler said this is the annoying thing about injuries is that managers know not to give you any information so they say things like oh he's making great strides what does that mean is it like is he making great strides in what context? Like three year stride, a two year stride, a six month timeline, a two week timeline? Or is he literally yeah. walking from one end of the bus to the locker room to another without pain? Yeah. I I don't know. So supposedly he'll be he's getting better. Uh and then three other injuries, James. Um and we'll talk about each one now. Uh the first one is Drew Pomeranz. Uh He's experienced left uh, elbow infl- infl- inflammation slash tightness, and uh, I, I I don't like that. I'm not, I, I'm not. I'm gonna say it right out. I don't think that 
pitchers should have elbows because they always inflame so much. <laughs> yes. Can we get pitchers without elbows? That does, That is, as of right now, quit hitting the mic, Joe. I'll do what I want. <laughs> You'll edit this out. No, you won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Anyways, I think Pomerantz is the first one out of the list that's concerning, mainly because he was our left-handed closer and he is... He was so lights out last year. Yeah, I, I do think, though, if it was serious, they would have let us know ahead of time. It, I think he would have Tommy John already. Yeah, exactly. Like, he would have surgery already, right? Yeah. But then again, like, Lamette didn't get surgery. But, so, from what I understand, he didn't have a Tommy John injury. And I don't pretend to be a doctor, so I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I do pretend to be a doctor. <laughs> I don't understand what you're saying. Um, uh, it once again brings up the hater discourse, James. The left-handed reliever discourse. Because, James, can you tell me the one current non-injured lefty relief pitcher? Let me say it again. The one current non-injured relief pitcher that's on the Padres roster. If Ryan Weathers is not a starter, he's a reliever. He is not Ryan Weathers currently projected. But who is it? Timothy Hill. I don't know. I don't know. Palomar College's own. Oh, that's right. The Tim pride Hill. of Palomar College, James. Yeah. Our alma mater. <laughs> you, cring, you, you cringe every time I say this. Our <laughs> our alma mater. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's a good pitcher, though. I, yeah, I mean he he is. I just he's I mean, no Pomerantz. I mean, this is this is kind of like we don't have. It's just interesting. We don't really. He's our one lefty specialist, which I know lefty specialists are not really a part of baseball anymore. There's no like lefty on lefty guys anymore. There are, but like not like well, they used to they be. Since they changed that rule that you have to have a minimum of three batters, that kind of ruins that guy's life. Or, or finish the inning. Obviously, right. yes. If there's a left hand hitter, that's up there and strike him out in the inning. Yes, that's the left hand specialist. I I don't like that rule for that reason because mm-hmm. I liked having you can call up a left hand specialist just to get out Barry Bonds. Yep. But you brought it up Weathers, right? Weathers, I mean, got leaked some pitches over the plate today. Today being Saturday. Look at his watch. March 20th, the game against the Dodgers. But he did, looks pretty well besides that. I mean, Struck out a bunch of guys. Like he, he did really good today. So I think, do you see like, do you see a possible? Let's say for him, Palm isn't back. Do you think Weathers takes his spot, or do you think we pull up someone else? I think Weathers deserves a spot in the starting rotation, regardless. The rotation or the, no, the rota- in the in the in the Open. roster. Via the bullpen or the starting rotation, if he needs to start the season in the bullpen until Pomerantz comes back, and then he can st- maybe do a start or two, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I don't mind that either. I think he has the tools for it. He proved it in the playoffs, right? As long as he keeps chewing that gum. Rah, 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 rah. That's my interpretation. of that's, how, that's me trying to chew gum without chewing gum on the mic because James would hate me. Yeah, I think I think Ryan Weathers is. I, I I very much see him coming back and being a bullpen choice. If I think he's in part of the bullpen, regardless, I actually think he's. I think someone gets bumped. I I think he. I have a suspicion he's going to be back. The suspicion based on zero fact, just based on my gut. Zero facts and expertise. Yeah, I mean, always trust your gut, right? Of course, yes. <laughs> Never failed me before. Speaking of that, too, kind of. Uh, oh man, hold on. I'm gonna butcher this man's name, young man's name. Hold on. Where is that? Where is my note? Nabil Krismat. Are you familiar with this young man? James? I am not. He's pitched very, very well for the pot. He's pitched on the. If you haven't, once again, if you haven't watched spring training, there are what I call exciting innings, and then there are you find the cheapest beer in the stadium innings. <laughs> he usually pitches then. Doesn't mean it's bad. 
it means that it's good because he pitched very well during that time. Uh, Nabil Krizmat has struck out 11 hitters across eight innings without allowing a run. And he's a lefty? No. That's why I was looked up before the show. I was I, that was gonna be my like oh this we got a we got a lefty we don't have lefty specialists but I think what you said is better what well, you said not better anyway you said earlier is true because of the new three batter minimum rule it doesn't really that 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 device of a lefty on lefty specialist is gone so I could see someone also be taking a flyer on someone who's super hot if he if Nabil stays super hot. Up until the end of spring training, I, I I wouldn't doubt it if we just ride the hot hand, especially in bullpen. Right, like bullpen people. If you're hot, you're hot, and you just, Correct, you yeah. just so I could see it also going that route. Definitely, I, I. It's hard to say because they have not said how bad Pomerantz is hurt, but like you said, just left elbow stuff, dude. Every time pitching <laughs> elbow is thrown in. To a pitcher's problem, it's very rarely. Oh, uh, <laughs> we put some, you know, hit some. It was a Windex. He's fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll see, though. I'm hoping it's not too bad. We have him for three years, so hopefully it comes out fine. Um, and the other one of the other new injuries, James, is Austin Nola. This is the big one. Fractured his finger. His fingy got hurt, James. So well, it broke. A fracture means. Break. <laughs> I guess if you want to be technical about it, we've already outlined. I'm not. I don't pretend to be a doctor, so you can't be surprised. Yes, I don't know what a break and a fracture is. I was in the room when you broke one of your fingers. Yeah. Well, Ladies it wasn't fun. Up. <laughs> <laughs> but he broke his finger. If I remember double. correctly. There was a lot of squealing. Yeah, very painful. Have you broken a <laughs> finger before? <laughs> not, not fun. So I, once again, another p- thing of uh, I can go up to Austin Nolan now and feel part of his pain. So I'm kind <laughs> of like a major league catcher in some ways. I'm just as tough as a major league. This catcher. is true. I survived a fractured finger. He survived a fractured finger. And growing up, you were the catcher in our. Uh, <laughs> I still have. Baseball. I still have. A gap in my finger because of my broken. Yes. Anyway, Austin Nola is no longer, <laughs> most likely, our starting day, opening day catcher. Well, to be fair, he wasn't going to be our starting opening day catcher. Anyways. Hey, 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 save it for next week's episode. <laughs> okay. Save it for next week's episode. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so we need to fill a gap. In our catching, we need to fill a gap for the guy who's going to catch eighty percent of the time. Is that is that a fair thing? To, fair. Is that a fair thing to say? Fair, yeah. Yeah. So we have options. The Padres have a very good catching prospect named Luis Camposano. He played a little bit last year, did very well, and he's doing pretty well in spring. Very, very well, actually. Yes, he did. Um, I am. Pretty excited Camposano's coming up. I like Noah a lot. I think Noah adds like a great deal of flexibility because he can play, I mean, converted shortstop to catcher. Um which is I don't I don't how many times does that happen? Converted to shortstop to catcher? You're converted shortstop to pitchers a lot, but not to catcher. Only other time I can think about it is with the reverse. Greg Bezier went from catcher to second base. Yeah. Well Noah plays infield like <laughs> he can play first base as well. So I think that's a huge flexibility loss we have. He's the only right-handed. Uh, I, I, I can't say that. we have With Nola gone, we only have three first basemen in our roster. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of the cushy four we're used to. <laughs> so, Victor Carantini, you Darvish's switch-hitting private catcher. Yes. Will be playing more. And I think that's... Unless Capizano can come up and just prove to be a star, it's Caratini is going to be our everyday catcher. You, you think pro- you think it's Caratini over Camposano? I think you're probably right, but I'm just wondering. Yeah. It depends on what Camposano does. As of right now, Caratini is the proven big leaguer. Mm-hmm. He's not the best hitter, but he's 
at least twice as good as Hedges he's ever was. Better than yeah, <laughs> he's better than I don't know <laughs> most of our catchers the past six years. Yes, and so yes, he's definitely going to be a he's a, he's our opening day starter. He's going to have the ball most of the games. Camposano is going to have at least one or two opening games of starting games in the first week, I think. And if he's proven himself to be as hot as he is in spring training. He might. They might do a 50-50 first, and if he keeps going, you're going to see Carantini get dwindled down more and Capistano get hit more. Capistano is a very, very, very good hitter. Uh, that's why he's rated so highly as a catching prospect. So I, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be cool to see him kind of get more reps in at the major league level. Uh, I don't know if he's ready, ready, but I think he's. I mean, he has real power. Pretty cool. like. I think he's going to be a real threat down the line for for the Padres in the future. But losing Austin Noll will be is significant because he Austin Noll has a potential of being way more consistent and just knows the pitching stuff so well. Yeah, that's his. That was his when he came to our staff last year. He knew our he knew our pitching rotation within a, a start or two. He knew everybody. And just by pitching, um, uh, pitching practice with him, he knew our staff. He's obviously a very smart catcher. He's a very good hitter. He's a smart player. His injury was probably more hurtful than anybody else. We already expect, suspected that we we're going to start the season with three catchers, and Camposano was going to be in the um, the roster. We're looking at. Nola coming back the end of April, probably five, six weeks to recover from a broken finger. Yeah, once again, as detailed twice previously in this show, I'm not a doctor. So maybe, could it be six years? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, but as we previously mentioned, you have broken a finger before. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. It It took me, as a 12-year-old, four weeks to get better before I could catch again, before I could... No look, cat, throw pitchers out, people out second base. I didn't no look anyone. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I, I think it's, I think it's exciting because we'll see more of a young talent. Uh, we're gonna, we're. I think it's. I'm interested to see. I'm interested to see what Paddock does with two catchers that don't. Like they'll be fine with them, but they don't really like. They haven't worked with them a lot before, right? C- Camp and Caratini both haven't worked a lot with them. Nola has. You think about Paddock and like his relationship with the catchers, and this is always such an interesting subject, anyway. Is how much catchers, uh, how much catchers actually affect the performance of a pitcher? Because literally, we got a pitcher last the off season who was like. That guy, that catcher, he's coming with me. Yeah, I'm sorry why I'm going if you take him with me. You're like, oh, whoa, this is a big deal. So someone like Paddock, who's thrown Hedges, Mejia, and Nola, and Castro the past, like those have been his catchers. And all of a sudden you have you have two new guys. So I'm interested to see what he does. Uh, I think Musgrove will be fine. And maybe I'm overthinking this. This is this is always one of the weird things about catchers pitcher relationships. Are you familiar with um, catcher's ERA? Basically, it's a catcher like when a catcher when a specific catcher catches a pitcher. What's their what's the ERA of a pitcher on average? What's the combo ERA between right, right, two right, of them? Okay, right. yeah, makes sense. I'm I'm interested to kind of see. If, I'm always interested if that stuff actually matters in a new club like this. Not a new club, but like two new catchers. I, it's interesting. I'll, I'll be interested to see. Well, the, the re, I think the reason why you brought up Paddock is because out of all the catchers, is he's the pitchers? I mean, is he the biggest head case? That's rude. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think he gets in his way, his own way. I exactly. He, I, I he's even said that. I think this spring training, he said the big thing is to not let himself get, not let the inning get away with him, with himself or something. Something along the lines of like he gets too caught up in the inning. Gets too caught up in his losses, his, and just can't get over it. I think, admittedly, so, and so it's kind of, you know, I I do think it matters to kind of 
have a good game plan. I, I, I'm, just, I'm just not too familiar with... I'm assuming Caratini, by catching one of the best pitchers in baseball, Darvish, knows very well how to handle uh, a complex arsenal and that kind of unknown. And it also sounds like he's, a, he's also a veteran. Right. More likely, he'll be catching Paddock as well. Yeah, I think you're probably. I think yeah, I, I think you're probably right. But anyways, I, I, I think in some ways it's going to be. It's, I, I don't think. In some way, I don't think this makes us. I don't think this makes us a, necessarily a worse team with this injury, but has the potential to be, for the first month, pretty. It could be pretty bad. It's always difficult when you have a catch that works well with your staff, a pit with your staff right. to lose him. But then again, he only was in our team for 20 games last year. Yeah, but it's a significant part. But yeah, interested to see. And we'll, we'll talk about more when we look kind of when rosters settle and stuff like that. Uh, and the final injury, James. Trent Grisham has a hamstring thing, a pulled hamstring, like a strained hamstring. He didn't break his hamstring. I don't know if he can break a hamstring or snap. I guess he would snap a hamstring. And I would assume that would <laughs> entail <laughs> not, a lot of screaming. <laughs> that's not what happened. So uh, another kind of, I think this is a pretty big deal if it if it continues because he won the gold glove for center field. Last yeah, you year? can't you can't <laughs> understate that enough that he had his most productive year of his entire career last year. He he was one of the people being considered for best turnaround player of 2020. Yep. Will Myers had an even better year than he did. But Trent Grisham got rid of a lot of demons. He proved himself a great fielder, he proved himself a great hitter. He was definitely one of the guys that could hit possibly 30 home runs for us this, this season. Yeah. Again, they they said a hamstring thing, right? Yeah, I think I think it's I I think it might I, he said he's dealt with it before in his in his career. And according to Tingler has had some good days and is progressing slow and steady, which is just manager whatever talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't technically say nothing. I must say something. <laughs> well, he's better today than he was yesterday. What does that mean exactly? Did he, did he make himself breakfast today? Didn't he, the day before? Did he Uber Eats himself something last night, but tonight he made himself egg? Like, what's, this, what's, what, what's the metric here? I... I I'm not too worried about Grisham. Well, I am worried that if it, but the injury doesn't sound that bad. Yeah. Again, we'll know more next week when the roster is finally set. But as of right now, he's still our starting fielder. I don't know who we're, I mean, we had a conversation last week. It got a little weird about our outfield. <laughs> I mean, things were said. <laughs> there were a lot of angry comments on YouTube. <laughs> it just, but as of right now, I think if he does not start center field this opening day, um, Brian O'Greedy has had a really good spring training, and possibly, yeah, I think that's who's going to be. I don't. I don't see why we would start Fam in center field when we have Brian O'Greedy. I, I need to have someone from the Padres organization explain Fam in center field. I like Tommy Fam. I really do. I do too. Please, Padres organization, call us. Explain your major league decision to a podcast. Yes. Listen, fifteen subscriber podcast. 15 <laughs> subscribers, ladies and gentlemen, and half of them aren't even our family. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I don't get it. I don't understand. The guy's fast. He is a, he is a, he can jump quickly. Yes. He does steal bases. So he does have the, I would, it's hard because yes, if you put it, break it down, center fielder does what? 
He's fast. Uh, he's smart. He can be a leader in the outfield. And you look at Tommy Pham, he's like, yeah, he does all those things. But then there's a time when Tommy Pham like, sees a fly ball and just drops it. You just can't have that in a center and they're field. they're not like their difficult plays he drops. I it worries me so much. Her, Jerickson Profar makes a little more sense, I think. I can't really quantify that either. But we have... Yeah, I think what's what what is going what's happening now. So you mentioned the the roster um, shuffle. We're starting to see the roster crunch uh, right now happening in in the Padres uh, spring training roster. People we thought were got shoved down did Hassel, Joshua, Mears, really good talented guys. We'll see in the future, or some other team we'll see in the future. Yeah, it's fair, and. We have people around like CJ Abrams still around, Brian O'Grady, Jorge Onya still around. Only one of those can play center field, and that's Brian O'Grady. Correct. In Brian, fact, if you look him up on online, it'll say Brian O'Grady, center fielder. Brian O'Grady is a very, very talented center fielder and had a pretty good spring so far. But we're at this weird place now where our offense is so good. This is what I believe. I think. When we play the Pirates, I don't think defense matters. Uh, this is no disrespect to the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's complete disrespect to the Pittsburgh Pirates. It's very disrespectful. Very. Worst, dis- po- I mean, it's not possibly the worst team that's ever been fielded. I don't. Eh, that's disrespectful to. Let me look up any of their players' names. I'm just kidding. I know who Cole Tucker is. I don't know anyone else though. Key Brian Hayes is also on it. Colin Moran. I'm. I'm thinking Pirates. Those are fine players, but yeah, they have no pitching, and like they just, I, I, I do honestly think that offensive production is going to take precedent if we don't have Grisham. I agree, and so Fam has, Fam is the guy in a, is like a video game character that has all the right attributes, but you're playing like I just can't. I can't beat anyone with this. I can't win. I can't win. He has the uh, nunchucks uh, and the flame fist. Yeah. How come I can't win? It's just like, and that's not specifically to him in center field. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. AJ Preller, DM me on Twitter. Tell me what you're thinking. I, I don't get it. But, but then if you think about it, like you want Myers, you want Profar, you want Fam. Like on, Fam gets on base all the time. Yeah, of course. You, you want those guys, right? You want those guys. And, and then you say, well, we have to have Hosmer, we have to have Cronenworth, we have to have Tatis, we have Machado. And you're kind of you're kind of in this weird place of, let's say you want someone like Kim in the outfield. Well, you want to offset that with someone who's stable. Correct. And that's Fam. It's always come back to, like, Fam's the one who gets on base a lot. He's the one. And so it's like, yeah, he may have two errors. Whatever. He gets to the ball. I think he can get to the ball. I just don't think... I, I don't think he... I don't know. I I haven't seen it. And it worries me. I just worry that, like, we're going to see the first Dodger series, fans in center field, and someone's going to hit a ball in the gap, and he's just going to... I don't know. I just worry. I worry too much. It's it, you know what? You no know reminds me of. Remember back in the olden days of 2018 when they tried to put Will Myers at third base. Oh yeah, it was that was just painful. That Will was, Myers has gotten so much disrespect. He's such a selfless player. He's like, oh, you got Hosmer. I'll stop being a first baseman. I'll be an outfielder. And previously, he was a catcher. He went from catcher to first base to outfield. And then they're like, oh, "We don't have a third baseman yet." This is before. This is this is pre M, pre M M, pre May Machado. So, I'll try out for third base. This Christian Villain, the wave guy, can't really field. So I'll try it out. It was so ugly. It really was terrible. It, he did technically field a few balls. Technically, he did like. He did get there, did throw it out. It's not like left field is that much different than center field, but there is something that ner- unnerves me like like that because center field is such a different beast, and Grisham has done such a good job putting Fam 
in the center. If if Grisham is hurt coming into opening day, we have to have Brian O'Grady, or a real center fielder. I agree. Because yes. we cannot have... We, if When we face a good offense, we need a good center fielder. I And I, I think I said this last weekend, Will Myers is a better center fielder than Pham. I, I don't have that data. That's what my gut says, too. Will Myers is also known to lose balls in the sun, but let's not think about that too yes, much. Yes, of course, but I'm just saying I would feel more comfortable with him in center field than Pham. I still want Pham's bat. I want Myers' bat. Trent Grisham did a lot of good out there, and I think you're going to need somebody who is center left and right are very similar positions and their defensive skills. Center field is the quarterback out there. They have to be the most athletic. They have to be the smartest. They make If the center fielder calls you off anywhere in the field, you back off. Even if you're an infielder trying to take a pop-up, you hear the center fielder call, he's in charge, you take it back off because usually he's the best defensive player. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm on board with that. I, and that's a weird thing. Like, Pham has... Like, Pham is a leader. All right, so we're going to send Hosmer Tums... <laughs> Yeah. What heals a calf um, pull strainy thingy? Kale? For talk, which, okay, which injury are we talking about? Palm? I'm saying, how do we send something to fix Grisham? What does he need? Well, well we got to go through the list first. So, first, we got we got Tums to Hosmer, Pomeranz, elbow. So, we give him what? what like Tiger Palm. Tiger Palm. <laughs> tiger Palm. <laughs> Pierce Johnson's groin injury. I mean, it's a family podcast. We can't be too. <laughs> I don't know. I I would say a, a bigger cup. A bigger <laughs> Austin Knowles fractured finger. There's nothing they can really do about that other than good wishes and maybe calcium. Send Just walk calcium. it off. Just walk it off. Calcium pills <laughs> builds bones. And Grisham kale. We'll send him kale. Yeah, I think that heals a calf, right? A hamstring. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it has to. Listen, we're both nutrition science people. It's we a superfood, right? Yeah. It's got kale's great for you. Exactly. Helps you all out. So James, we have a uh, crunch going on roster wise. We still don't really know what the final final pro- roster is going to be, and that's going to be what we talk about next week. We're going to talk about what the final roster is going to be, what our expectations are. We're going to do a deep dive on Next week's episode is going to be big. It'll probably be over an hour. We're going to have a big dive on everything before the season, get everyone ready and hyped. Dude, there totally. might even be a musical number. We haven't decided yet. We, we, we hired the Rockettes, so we're all going to be socially distant, so it's going to be okay. Yes. You can't get them all, because socially distant, you're just too far of us. You know, they're too far apart. You're, you're killing this joke. We're going to do a, a slow pan. The joke pan. is dead. <laughs> <laughs> you have killed the joke. <laughs> I look forward to next week. We're going to talk more about the roster and anything else, James, any other thoughts about this week in spring training for San Diego Padres? No, I do think the players that we've kept are telling. Obviously, C.J. Abrams is doing very great. Onya is doing very great. We have hurt people. I'm not too worried about it because unlike... Years past, we've talked about before, the dark times. I can't think of another time in Padres history where we've had talent to replace talent. Usually, when a player went down, we didn't have anyone to go go there. Okay, like, like back in the 90s, Steve Finley went down. There was no one to replace that gold glove center fielder. And and it was just, okay, that's going to hurt for a couple weeks. It's like, it's better. We legitimately have talent upon talent. Honestly, Pham is probably a good, he's a really good player. He has a lot of talent. He has dropped maybe three balls in the outfield. He's just not a gold glove center field like Trent Grisham is. Right. We have talent upon talent right now. Yes, some of it's young. Some of it's not very majorly experienced, but they are talented. They are valuable pieces for our rosters. I, I guess this is this is why this year is so exciting. 
I, I can't think of a single time in Padres history where we've had this much talent. And everybody in spring training that we hope would do good has done good and has proven themselves good against major league hitters and pitchers. It's it's. I'm not too worried because of the talent we have, especially people that we've kept so far. Also, also I've said before, AJ Preller is not afraid to trade people. True. Come trade deadline, if we need, if there is some sort of talent gap in some position, if we need a center fielder, AJ Preller will get a center fielder. We have enough talent in our lineups. We have super talent in our in our um, our farm system. We will have these gaps filled. I think you're absolutely right. I think there's no better way to end it. But to look forward to the future, James, of our super deep talent. Because I started just showing on a morose note. Things aren't that bad, James. No, they're not. Things are not that bad at all. No. We got people like Bobby Hassel and Tukapita Marcano and Nabil Krismat. You worked really hard on those names. All I, week. I, I, I had to look. I had to like replay the names in my head and just like, is that how you pronounce it? So yeah, we have a really, really deep talent. C.J. Abrams is going to be the next C.J. I mean Tatis. Book it. I'm going to say it. It's not because I have a vested in his rookie card. No, not no, at all. Not at all. Not, not at all. At all. But thank you, James, for this lovely podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We're on all of your favorite podcast stations, YouTube, Spotify, all the other ones I can't remember that don't really matter. <laughs> and if, remember, hit the notification bell. And that's that's it. That's it, James. Is that how we're gonna end it? We're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna we're just gonna Well, I mean we can hash up old things from last week. Okay, we're at it. <laughs> I, I I'm just saying, like <laughs> How do you want to end it? It's it's a short and sweet episode. What do you want from us? <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. And there it is. Oh, doctor. 